Now I'm showing you this video with the assumption that the first bit you've already done. You've already shown me how to configure and set up your workstation, which basically means talking me through each part of the actual process, uh, talking about the keyboard, the MIDI keyboard, uh, the headphones, and every other component and tell me how it's connected and physically connecting up yourself. So this is just about to show you how to actually do this in Logic. So the first thing you'll need to do is load up Logic itself. So once you said, <clears throat> I've got my workstation set up, I'll just log in. Obviously the first thing you'll need to do is set up Logic. Now this version of Logic is going to look a little bit different to the one we have at school because I'm doing this at home and my version is not as new as the one we have there. But all the things you see should be in the same place and it will look familiar to you as soon as you actually start watching it. So without any further ado, I'm just going to load up Logic, and there we go. You see I've got a lot of other stuff there that doesn't really uh, correlate with what we have at school. It's loading up Logic 8, but there you go, Logic 8, a lot of it looks very, very similar. <clears throat> now I've set it up in the preferences so it loads up a new file when you start up Logic, and I can do that with your computers as well, so you won't have to worry about that because normally it wouldn't come up like this, it would come up with the last thing that you saved. So what you'll need to do first off is have your new track set to audio and two. And you need to actually explain what audio tracks are. So audio tracks are tracks where you can record real sound through a microphone or an electric guitar as opposed to a software instrument track which records MIDI information. So all you need to do is that. Don't worry about this stuff here. Just make sure it's on mono, but it should be fine anyway. So just press create. Now what you're going to do is demonstrate some loops. So I'm going to go to media and loops. And here I can see I've got my loops categorized by style and a lot of them by instruments as well. So I'm going to choose all drums. Now when we've got these blue ones here, you need to make sure you choose a blue one here because a green one won't work. Oh yes, it will. I beg your pardon, it will work. But what I'd like you to do actually is if you could use bl uh, blue ones, that would actually help me quite a lot. So. So I've got a beat here that I like. Now when I click on it and listen to it, it's called auditioning. And I'm not doing that by mistake, you need to demonstrate that. So you need to say I'm going to audition my loop now and see what it sounds like. I quite like that one, so I'm going to drag it in. And there we go, there's my loop. And now you need to demonstrate how you can copy and paste it. So you could either do Alt and drag, or you could do Command C and Command V. So Command C there, and Command V there, or I'm going to delete that now. You can do it through the through the menus. Edit, copy. Make sure your song position pointer here is at the right place, and then edit, paste. And funny enough, you can do the same thing here as well. So you can do it in quite a few places. Now you've got that. You've shown how to copy and paste. Now what you're going to do is demonstrate on a different channel some more loops but being a little bit more creative with them. So we're going to reset this one here so it kind of takes our choices back and I'm going to choose some guitars. So let's try this one for example. Quite like that one so I'll use that one and oh, I'm going to undo that because I shouldn't have done that. I'm just going to get rid of that channel. Ignore this bit, shouldn't have done that. I want to drag it into to the one I've actually got there already. So I'm just going to drag this in here. There we go. And you'll see here I've got my loop. So if I can play them together now, click on the play button. No problems. Okay, so what I'd like to do is make this a little bit more interesting second time round. So what I can do is cut them. So press escape to bring up the toolbox and use the scissors tool and start cutting them. And make sure that whenever you cut it, it's in line with these little notches here. And you can hear it kind of dragging and going across the actual music backwards. Don't be worried, that's what it should be doing. A little bit confusing if you're not used to it. So, so just cut it into little bits like this. And then what you can do is just copy random ones over. So Alt and drag, let's say for example, do the second one, then the first one, then that one, then that one if you like then you could copy a couple. If you hold down shift, you can select multiple ones like that. 
and let's just have that one there. And you'll get something different. And, and there you go. And then you start making something interesting. Now you need to point out how to do that. So just make sure you're saying why you're doing it as well. So you're cutting up the audio to make it sound a little bit more creative with your loops. It's easy enough to drag a loop in and use it, but it shows a bit more creativity and a bit more musicianship if you can actually show how you can do that in a creative way. And this is a creative way. Now, the next step is to actually play in some MIDI. So to do that, you're first going to need to add a new track. So what I suggest you do is click on the plus button here, just above your top track there. And if you can see, if you leave your mouse hovering on it, it says new track. So click on it, and now you need to choose just one and a software instrument, and then just press create. 